Hi, welcome back. This is Tammy, and I do math for coffee. Segment edition, it's called segment edition postulate. Postulate's a fancy word for rule. Let me show you what the segment edition postulate looks like in a real simple way. So if I draw a piece like this, and let's say that that is three units long. I'm not going to put units on here, so it could be centimeters, inches, feet, whatever. Let's just call it three. And then I grab another segment and I put it right up next to it and let's say that this one is five units long of course nothing is ever going to be drawn to scale then the question is is how long is that whole thing and you're all like well it's got to be eight just in case you don't see it we're talking about the length of those two things combined and so you figure that out by going three plus five and you get eight that's the segment addition postulate. Pretty simple, but of course, you know, we're going to make it a little more complicated. I'm going to work three problems for you, and then I'll give you some practice problems to do. Example one. I am going to have one segment that is the letter I to H. And this is the one I don't know. I don't know how long that is. I have another segment next to it that goes from H to G, and it is seven units long. And I'm told that the distance from I all the way to G is 18. Whether I'm shown that in a diagram or I'm told that with words, that's what it means, is that the whole thing is 18. Now to solve that, we have to use what we know. The segment addition postulate says that if you have two pieces put together, you add them up. So this piece we don't know plus this 7 is going to equal that 18. So setting that up, I got question mark plus 7 equals 18. Tiny little algebra equation here. I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. Question mark equals 11. And that is our final answer. Okay, example number 2. Alright, we're going to find the length of TR. I'm given a segment that is starting at the point U and goes to the point T. And then there's another segment that starts at T and goes to S. And then there's another segment that goes all the way over to the last point, which is R. Some information that we're given is that this one is 9. From U to T is 9. From S to R is also 9. And then they're also told that from U to S is 14. So it's starting to get a little bit more complicated. They're asking us for is TR. So that means we need this piece plus this piece. We already know this one is 9. Well, we don't have a measurement for this distance that's going from T to S. They gave us this clue down below that the whole distance is 14, and we know the first chunk of it is 9. So it's just pretty much a subtraction problem. Subtract 9 from 14. So we know that this piece right here is 5. Then in order to answer the problem, TR equals 5 plus 9. I didn't really go over it too much in the notation. I'll go over it right now. If you're naming the segment, I'm over here on the side. So the name of the segment is TR with a line over it. The measure <laughs> measurer <laughs> Okay, hey, you know what, if you ever take my class in real life, you'll know. I make as many mistakes as anybody. I just do them publicly. All right, so now we need to come up with the answer. TR equals 5 plus 9, 14. There we go. All right, example 3. There's a diagram we're going to start with. 
Mm -mm. I'm going to make my line kind of long. I'll put some dots in here. This is J. This is K. Go a little bit and put an L. And an M. My K looks funny. All right, the piece between J and K. This is where you're going to see some algebra. This is 4x minus 1. Now, don't, don't get freaked out. We already know how to do this with numbers, right? So that we're just going to use the same processes, but we'll be using algebra expressions too. K through L is 8. And then from L to M is negative 3 plus 2x. I don't know why we didn't just write 2x minus 3. Same thing, but okay, this is how it is. And we are given that the length of the entire thing equals 7x plus 1. We have to use what we know, segment addition postulate. You add up all the little things and set them equal to the total. So that means the 4x minus 1 plus the 8 plus the negative 3 plus 2x has to equal this. So I am going to take each one of these chunks, add them together, combine like terms, do some algebra stuff on it, but it equals this thing, the 7x plus 1. When we combine like terms, we're going to put all the x's together, a 4x and a 2x is a 6x. And then we're going to put our numbers together. We have a negative 1 plus 8. That's a 7. And then we have a 7 minus 3. So that's a plus 4. Equals 7x plus 1. Now we have variable on both sides. There's more than one way to solve these, but my rule of thumb is to usually subtract off the smallest variable term. So 6x is fewer x's than the 7x, so I'm going to take that away from both sides first. Oh, I'm going to run out of paper. I'll be have to get all squishy here. All right, so that'll cancel out, and we get 4 equal to x plus 1. And then we're going to solve for x. Now, there was no directions given on this, so I'm just going to assume we're solving for x. So we've got to subtract that 1 from both sides. This lesson usually happens very beginning of geometry, so I, I'm pretty careful with my algebra. So it's a review for a lot of folks. And we are getting 3 equals x. Now, for right now, we're going to stop there. But if they asked us what jk was, we would just take this x and substitute it in here. 4 times 3 is 12, and 12 minus 1 is 11. Pause and copy this problem and do it in your notebook. I will be right back to show you the solution. And this one's pretty straightforward. We're going to solve for x. 9 plus x equals 16. So you can make an equation out of it if you want to. Somebody's going to be screaming at me right now. It's like too easy. Don't do algebra on it. But that's the setup. You can practice your algebra even if it's kind of easy. And we end up with x equal to 7. Did you get that? I hope so. All right, here comes your second one. Here is your second try it. Again, pause, copy the problem in your notebook, and give it a go. I'll be right back. The entire length is 29. That means x plus 22 plus 2x plus 26 plus 11 equals 29. Now you can write that all out and then combine like terms, or you could do it this way, which is I'm going to combine the terms as I go. This has an x in it. This has two x's in it. There is no x here. 1x plus 2x, that is 3x's. And just in case you forgot, if you just see an x by itself or any variable by itself, you have to remember there's an invisible 1 in front of it. So 1 plus 2 is 3. I have 3x's three all together. 22 plus 26 is 48, 
and 48 plus 11 is 59. A equals 29. All right, now we have a two-step equation to solve. We need to get the variable piece all by itself. I'm going to subtract the 59 from both sides. So that cancels. We end up with just the 3x on this side equals 29 minus 59 is a negative 30. Now you're going to divide both sides by 3, and we're coming up with x equal to negative 10. And that might be freaky for a while, <clears throat> but you think about it, all you need to do is plug that in and make sure your segment lengths are positive. Here comes try it number 3. You're going to have to solve for x first, but eventually you're going to plug that in because it wants you to find EF, which I forgot to write the F, it's right here. So ultimately, we are looking for this length, but we won't find that until the end. We have to set up and solve for x first. So like we've been doing, segment addition postulate says you add all these chunks together and you set it equal to the whole thing. So 4 plus 3 plus a minus 2. That's 7 and a negative 2. That's going to be a positive 5. So I know I'm going to have a plus 5. I didn't do my x's first. This guy has no x's. This one has 3x. That has 2x. So it has 5x's. And all of that needs to equal the whole thing, which is 8x minus 1. All right, now we have to start doing the algebra. There's actually four ways to start this problem. My preference for starting one of these when there's a variable on both sides is to deal with the smallest x first and get that thing canceled out. So I end up with 5 equals 3x minus 1. If I start with the smallest x -y term first, what happens is, is I end up with a positive answer. I like to avoid negatives as much as I can because, again, I make mistakes just like everybody else. And if there's a lot of negatives happening, sometimes I make sign errors too. Now solving, we have to add the 1 to both sides. And we get 6 equals 3x. And then we're going to divide both sides by 3. And I'm coming up with x equals 2, which is freaking awesome, but that is not what we wanted. They wanted us to figure out what EF was. Well, that means we're going to take this little guy and plug it in right there. So EF equals 2 times this 2 minus another 2. Well, isn't that sweet? They all match. They're matchy-matchy. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 2, and we get an answer of 2. Okay. Man, look at that. Even if you stopped right here and said x equals 2, you, you might end up accidentally getting that right, because your length equals 2 as well. Okay. Oh, I would never put that on a quiz if I was paying attention. I hope you did really good with that. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I check my comments every day, so I'll help you out. All right, moving on to the next lesson. Click into this link right now. Bye.